work? And I keep saying, where's the work? And they give me one answer. If that an and if that answer is wrong, it's wrong. So <clears throat> the first view, you just had to find the TC. The table is nice because everything is positive on the table. Are we okay with this? Degrees of freedom, remember our degrees of freedom? Always do degrees of freedom. The table is nice because it says DX. It doesn't say N, it doesn't say sample size. So degrees of freedom is every person has a freedom of choice except that last person. So that's where we subtract one. Everybody okay with this? did it out the long way, all you have to do, I, you don't even have to sketch this, all you have to do is look it up on your table. I did it out the long way in case anybody sketched and anything. Number five, they just wanted a margin of error. And if you did this and if you wanted to use your key interval, you could and backtrack your margin of error, but in this, this problem, they didn't give you a mean. So you can't use your, your interval one here. Normally, you can go to your interval and subtract the mean and get your margin of error. But um, not on these two because they didn't give you a mean. So you have to use the formula. So again, you found your degrees of freedom. You found your TC. Plug it into your calculator and round. And I round it to two decimals because you don't have a mean. One decimal as long as your rounding is correct. Some of you are struggling with your rounding. Make sure that rounding is correct. Notice we're given the sample standard deviation. So if I wanted to use that formula for margin of error, and I wrote this formula out, I could find my VC unbeknownst to me. But then when I go to do this, I say, whoops, I don't have this population. I only have a sample. So I can't use this. I have to use the one with the S in it. If you, you don't have another choice. You have to use that one that has the sample in it. Questions on these? Maybe. Okay. From here, we went to. Okay. From here, we went to finding intervals. Okay, you can see that one, right? We went to finding intervals. If you want to use your calculator, that is fine. You want to find your TC, plug it in, find your margin of error, that is fine. You want to give it to me like this? I don't want this. You have to finish this part. Or you can give me this. You can set it up as an inequality. So that I can be whatever percent confident that this is going to be, oh, is this a Z and it's N and C? Let me just move this one over. Okay, this one asked you, this was a good one. This one asked you for your Z interval and your T interval. Did you guys do both? I can't move this over on the bottom for some reason. I can't move it over. No, I can't move it over for some reason. Did it ask you for a C and a T? Guys? Okay. <clears throat> um, must have asked for both. You see, we found your margin of error for this guy, and then we set up your interval. I guess that's all you have to do is set up your interval just in case. Okay. This one, there was one that asked for a Z and a T. I'm going to make sure I hit that one. This one, clearly a T interval again. I only know the standard deviation from the sample. Do you guys have any questions? Do you tell me what parts are you not getting? We're getting it? All right. If you use your calculator, just tell me what you put in your calculator for it. Because here's the thing. If you do a Z interval and you give me the answer for a T interval and I don't have any work that you use that, you get no credit at all. If you wrote it out and I saw Z 
interval or z thing some that where you put tell me what you use then i could at least just give you partial credit you just use the wrong one but if i don't see it there's no credit again this is just like the last one make an interval find a mean subtract it from the upper end margin of error find the mean the one in the middle take the average of the two numbers Add them together, divide by 2. Be careful in your calculator. If you add these together like this, and then you divide by 2, all you're just going to do is divide this guy by 2. So make sure you have parentheses if you're using your calculator. Or just do two steps. Add it, enter, divide by 2, enter. As simple as it sounds, I always get one or two that, that do that. Most of you are making mistakes in your calculator. Okay. So here's your microwave. Again, find your TC. Use your statement. I want to be 95% confident that the population mean repair cost of microwave ovens will fall between $71.84 and $88.16. If I give myself an interval, it's far better than saying it's going to fall at $80. Good. So here's a V and a T. This is the one. Just so that you see the difference. You, you want to redo number 17. And here was number 17 on the left-hand side. You want to redo it using a population standard deviation. So this time you turned around, and I gave you your population standard deviation. This is this guy. So therefore, you need to use this formula. So when we set up this interval, the mean is not going to change. The mean is, what was your mean? 35.5. Here's your z-score one. Your z-score, 29.1 to 41.9. This is my z-score. Here's your t. 29.5. Whoops. 29.5. That can't be. That can't be. Your T should be wider. Oh. Okay, what happened here, yeah, the reason this didn't happen is because of this. This actually is a very poor example. The standard deviations changed. If I kept the same standard deviation and I said that was for the population, then my z-score would be smaller than my t-score. But what happened is they changed your population standard deviation. So really there's no, no good comparison here. You really don't have the same information. Somehow, this one they changed too. So just so that you see, you're going to come out with different numbers. 22 did the same thing. They changed the standard deviation on you. So you see, is this one is narrower this time. Because they made your standard deviation smaller. But here's the key right here. Your TC, your ZC, one. This one is where the difference is. For a 95% confidence interval, there's the difference. Are we comfortable with that? And this one, you had to repeat this one using a population standard deviation. Then you're flipping back to your date. Everybody flip back and forth. Everybody able to do that? If they give you the population, you go back to the Z. Okay. And this last one, you have to put this one in your calculator. Put it in your L1. Pull out your sample mean, which is your S bar. 
Put out your sample standard deviation. This is your SS. This is the standard deviation that matches this sample. Construct a 99% interval for the population mean. Assume this is normally distributed because it's less than 30. So we fill it all in and get your interval. Questions at all? The quietest group ever? We have 10 minutes now, probably 15, 10 minutes tomorrow maximum.